everybody, and uh, welcome to our 30-minute uh, weekly workshop. My name is Dre. I'm with Verify, and today I'm going to be joined by Mike Stratton, another SE over here at Verify. I'm quite certain you guys have heard his voice on here before or probably worked with him already. Good morning, uh, Matt. Mike, sorry. <laughs> now you're in trouble. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. All right. Before we get started, I would like to mention that Verify Verify now supports Cube iOS analytics these days. It's quite the popular feature right now. So if that is any interest to you, just let us know or contact your account manager. Okay, for today, we're gonna be talking about our top widgets and reports for CCX supervisors. We're gonna start off with a quick overview of our company and what we do. We'll jump into a live demo where Mike will guide us through the top widgets and reports for CCX supervisors. We'll pause for Q&A and get some of your questions answered. During the demo, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel in the bottom right of the screen. After Q&A, we will reward one lucky attendee with a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around and see if you won. All right, this is a quick overview of Verify. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards, widgets, UCCX reporting, remote phone control, change management. But today, we're going to be focusing in on those CCX widgets. If you have any other questions on any of our other features, we can most definitely take them offline and get those answered for you. Before we get started, we want to announce that Verify now offers a new service that provides managed consulting services to our customers. Verify's SE team will be engaged on a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboard configuration, and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SC to do the heavy lifting of report creation and generation. For more information, please contact us and we'll be glad to speak more in depth about our new service offering. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the demo. Mike, I'm gonna pass you the ball, sir. All right, all right. I think I've got everything. Here we go. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us today. The workshop um, was pitched as like widgets and reports uh, every CCX supervisor should use. Um, in the past, we've done a few webinars that kind of that, that cover the basic UCCX reports and dashboards. Um, you know, if you want to take a look at them, if you're on a website, go to you know under the webinar sections. We've got a, a lot of webinars. That cover, you know, agent reports, CSQ based reports. Um, last week's webinar, if you're new to the software, covers um, does like a like a one on one kind of high level overview into the CCX widgets. It was a great webinar or workshop. Um, but we also cover, you know, wallboards and timing reporting. Um, and then as new features are released, we have workshops that cover all that information. So um, I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do. You know, talk today about what the CCX supervisors should be using. Um, I was out of call with a customer late last week, and we were re replicating a report. Um, and when we were trying to go over some new ideas with them, they said something to me. They said, we don't know what we don't know. And that kind of, I mean, I've heard it before. It's been said before. And I think with this webinar what I, or this workshop, what I want to do is to kind of cover some features that supervisors may not know. Um, because we can cover, you know, the same stuff that we've covered in the past, but I want to show you some new things where you can take what you have as far as your widgets and your reports, and then take them to the kind of a next level or think outside the box from your standard, like, you know, total counts, handled counts and abandoned counts. So, um, I'll start with the dashboards first. Um, I have a few already created. This is what we you know, normally see. You have, um, like an agent based. Uh, widgets where you're showing all of the different agent stats. So, you know, stuff like uh, their current, you know, their current uh, agent states, you know, how long they've been logged in for, what their not ready time is, um, you know, different counts, whether it's like abandoned counts, uh, ring no answer counts. Here I just have, you know, your inbound ICD counts that they've taken. Uh, so Alec has taken, you know, 52 counts from the queue or is taking 52 calls from the queue and they've answered, you know, 50 uh, out of those 52 calls. So this is a real basic, just high level uh, overview of what your agents are doing. Um, I see this used in pretty much every single dashboard. The, the widget below, we're looking at the, the, the queue data. So this is the, the real-time CSQ summary, uh, the real-time CSQ summary widget. We're looking at the different queues. So like if you're a supervisor, 
you know, maybe you're supervising multiple queues. Um, you know, this widget is showing you how many agents are logged into your queue, uh, you know, how many calls are waiting, all those calls in queue, um, and then just again, you know, total calls, how many calls came in, how many were handled, how many were banished. This is really what I see a lot of supervisors uh, and just, you know, people in general uh, configuring when they're building a dashboard and their widgets. Um, but to take it one step further and kind of expand the information, you know, when it comes to your agents, this is a good high level overview in this dashboard itself you can add more widgets but this is a really good starting point for just you know building like a main hub of information but if i want to expand the information for each of the different agents like we can take bruce wayne here if i want to see more about bruce without having to run a report a good way to do that is to build additional uh dashboards but to also build one dashboard for each agent so if you can build out you know in the case where i want to see more information about bruce but i don't i, I just want to see it you know I, I can't see everything i want in this dashboard so i built a second dashboard uh for bruce now to you know so instead of just seeing what's available at the high level i can dig into bruce's data and see what he's doing or what he's not doing um there's a couple of good things with this type of dashboard where um i want to kind of show you so one don't be afraid to build more than one dashboard. The software supports it. You know, if you have a lot of data, you can have different dashboards with different themes or different points of view. In my case, I have a main dashboard where I have all my high level overviews of my queues and my agents. And now I'm building out different dashboards, you know, one for each agent. So if I wanna see what Bruce is doing, I can see what Bruce is doing. If I wanna see what Charlie is doing, I can see what Charlie is doing. You know, I wouldn't be using these, I well, I may not be using these widgets or these dashboards, you know, all the time, but when I want to take that deep dive, these dashboards are here. Um, so great, it's great to do. You know, don't be afraid of making you know multiple dashboards. Um, also, this information here, this widget, is coming from the, the the contact center data. These four, if you can see on this one here, and all the way up to this one here, these four widgets are not reporting on the contact center data, but they're reporting on Bruce's data from the call manager. So don't be afraid to mix and match. Uh, so, you know, if Bruce was an employee who you know, is not just taking calls out of the queue, but maybe he's placing, you know, sales calls and maybe he's uh, receiving calls back, you know, directly from customers, not through the queue. If you want to see that data or expand upon what we can see from the contact center, you know, look to call manager to give you additional information. Um, you know, contact center only sees what goes on within the contact center, but the call manager has a higher view where you can see uh, the data that comes, you know, not, not just that data that, well, you can see two things. One, you can see the data that comes into the contact center um, from the point of view of the call manager, but you can also see the calls that don't go to the contact center, but may also go to your agents. So stuff like if Bruce is taking calls and, you know, I'm his supervisor, but I'm not just concerned with his, you know, I wanna see more than just his, his, his calls from the queue. So I can see how many calls he took today or, or, or placed and received and answered and then i can also see from the point of view of the call manager how many calls went to voicemail so you know these dashboards can highlight a lot more about each agent than what we can see from just from the call manager another thing if i'm a supervisor going back to the the, the ccx data not ready time this is an awesome metric so you know if, if an agent is not ready that means that they're not taking calls out of the queue which also means that you know you have less people taking calls out of the queue uh your, your queue times are going to go up by a little bit so, you know, and then with higher queue times, you're gonna see higher abandonment rates. So it's good to highlight not just how long someone's not ready for, like we can do here, um, but we can also see um, why they're not ready. And so we can use finesse to, to pull back those custom not ready codes. So we can see, hey, Bruce took an hour, you know, you know within the, the current week, he was on break for an hour. Uh, we can see, you know, the different um, codes. I've seen call, you know, codes for, um, like email correspondence, stuff for, you know, customer help, um, you know, lunch times, email, here's the, your email, um, this one's for, you know, don't want to work. Um, so we can also include, you know, your not ready times um, to see, you know, at the agent level to see what they're doing throughout their day. Um, another suggestion that I can think of when we, if you're building out agent specific dashboards is to, you um, Share this data, and not just these, not just these dashboards, but for any dashboards. But you know, share the dashboard with the agent. So the every dashboard, um, you have two options to share. So if we edit the dashboard, 
We can do sharing here, which is um, if you're sharing your dashboard with another with another user. So this would assume that Bruce has access to the software. He has a login and he can set up his own dashboards. If you want to share a dashboard with him, um, you can do so using the sharing function. If you don't want him to have access to the software, or if you have like a manager or some other employee who you know you want to share uh, the data with, you can use the public access or permalink function then to share a link with the with anybody. And by going to this link by you know by turning on public access and then by sharing a link, um, anybody with this link will have access to the dashboard. So it's a great way to show you know, to share data, whether you're, you're, you're building a, a dashboard um, for a specific agent, you're building a dashboard for yourself, or maybe you're building a dashboard for you know, your, your entire team. You know, this is a great way you can take this dashboard and put it on a, a TV screen um, that shows maybe not just Bruce's data, but again, you know, the, the team's data, the, the, the entire call center's data, you can put on a screen and show you, um, or show, you, you know, show everyone you know, what's going on. And then going back to the dashboard, um, also, you know, if, if you are looking into building out different dashboards uh, or, you know, to make, you know, for, for different agents, um, a, a really easy way to do it is to use a copy function. So if you want to share the dashboard between people, use the copy function uh, or make use the copy function to, to make copies of the dashboard and then just update it with, with the proper agent information. Okay. So next um, dashboard I put together was uh, on a Q level metric that I don't see uh, a lot of uh, supervisors or a lot of users using. It's the service level. So um, when, a, when a queue is configured within contact center, there are um, two values that you can set up. One is a, the service level and the other is the service level percentage. The service level, Think of it like a goal. It's it's like a, a goal revolving around queue time. It's basically, if my service level was like twenty seconds, then that means that 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 goal is I want every call you know answered before it, it spent more than twenty seconds in the queue. The service level percentage is a target goal for like how many of those calls meet the service level. So, if my service level was twenty seconds, and my percentage was eighty uh, percent. My goal is to have uh, 20 um, or 80 percent of the calls answered within 20 seconds. And so if you're not reporting on service level, you know, it's something worth looking into. It can expand just your, your basic, you know, queue times uh, for like handling abandoned calls and, and take it to like a, a next level. So in this dashboard, I, it's, it's all focused on service levels, um, but it's a really great overview into how to how to dis dis display your data. So this uh, widget here, I'm looking at all the different service levels. I can see how many calls met the service level, you know, what percent met the service level, um, and how many um, missed the service level. So I can see, you know, the good and the bad at the queues. With this type of widget, I highly recommend using thresholds. This way, instead of having to scan through the data to see, you know, what's, what values are good or what values are bad, you can highlight specific values based on a certain percent or a certain value. So for in this case, um, I'm, I want all of my calls to be answered or to have a uh, service level percentage of 75%. So 75% or higher is considered good. So I marked in the thresholds, we go back to thresholds. I marked the thresholds uh, showing the, the met service level percent. I want it to be 75 or greater, which means that my, my missed service level should, should not be greater than or equal to 25%. So in this case, the phone room queue is doing great. They're, they're, uh, they've met uh, the, the service level for 86% of the calls. The other three queues are struggling, especially the, uh, the online help desk where, you know, they've, they've missed the service level on 85% of the calls. So, with a widget like this, when you have a lot of different numbers, you know, all over the, you know, top to bottom, we've got, you know, five rows of data and six columns of, of different values, it's good to use the thresholds to highlight the data. So if you're building widgets, you know, for yourself, for your team, for a dashboard, I highly recommend using the thresholds to highlight specific values. Um, another way to display the data is to use the, um, the CSQ summary widget to display 
important stats. So in this widget, we're using the thresholds to highlight the important stats out of everything else that's that's available. Here, I built a you know a single widget to highlight the one value that's most important. So when it comes to the phone room, I want to see you know just basically what is the service level percent of calls that have met that 20 second threshold. Instead of showing it here, it's just a simple rectangle. I'm showing 86.72%. This is a metric. It catches my eye. It's big text. It's right there on the screen. Um, you can break it out, you know, one for each queue. Um, you know, you can show different values here. Uh, we have, you know, multiple counts for the same one. So I can see the 86%. I can see what's the missed percent. And then it's, if I want to throw in additional values like a band account, I can. So it's a great widget. It's really simple, straightforward to use. You select your queues. Here, I just had the one queue for phone room. And then from the list, you pick the, the, the values you want to see and then include them on, on the widget. So I see, I see this used a lot um, on the call manager side where you know we're just highlighting certain values, but we can also use it on the contact center side as well. Next, um, I always like seeing graphs. They're, they're, they're great to look at. So I highly recommend you know some sort of time period or um, some widget that, that shows you the, the different uh, you know, groupings by time period. So this these two widgets here, One's for phone room, the other's for the other queue. They're both looking at the same uh, the same value. So that, again, we're looking at the service the service levels, but this can be used for anything from queue times, you know, talk times, hold times, um, anything like that. And um, just looking at just the basic value, so we can see how everything changes throughout the day. We can see you know busy hours. We can see um, or we can see busy hours from like a different point of view of you know how fast we're answering calls. So we can see. Um, you know, and by clicking on the different boxes, we can hide different values to see what, you know, so if you want to compare the met level against the missed level and, and avoid everything else, we can see it. So we can see that hey, when this drops, you know, of course, the, the missed service level is going to, going to go up. So we can see what hours, you know, maybe we're understaffed or maybe we can see which hours, maybe there's a, a higher call count. And so we can see, yeah, hey, maybe the you know the eleven o'clock hour, you know, we're not meeting our, our service level as, as much as we should be. Um, also, if you're if you're building graphs and you want to uh, exclude all this blank space, like for example, this call center is open between six o'clock and or it's open from six to six. When you're uh, building the widget, make sure under your time period settings to turn off the all day toggle, and set up the proper uh, start and end times. So here in this case. You can go, you know, an hour over extra if you want, but here, the pre year graph, we're not seeing all that, all that dead space on uh, the left and right hand side. Okay. Moving on. So, all right. So, um, we'll move on and actually one more quick widget or quick dashboard. I have uh, just a miscellaneous kind of dashboard set up. This is not, not so much to show the dashboard, but to show the, the different widgets. So, Going back to looking at the um, the call manager data, I've used um, the utilization concurrent call activity, which is so this is looking at call manager data, but it's to show me uh, a different point of view of my as a supervisor as my my peak hours uh, or my peak call time or looking at not just like which like my like my my busy hours so like this widget below, it's looking at the number of calls for the entire hour. So we can see ten o'clock is the busy hour. Um, and then things kind of taper off during the day. This widget is looking at the number of concurrent calls or the number of overlapping calls happening at any one point in time. So, you know, this is a great point of view. I can see, you know, the number of calls coming in, but I also want to know how many calls are happening at one point in time. So, if we're looking at concurrency or the calls happening at one time, you know, we, we can't see it from the CCX side, but we can see it from the call manager side. So, we can see here at on the, um, on the 15th between 10 and 20, and 1029, there were at the peak five concurrent calls. So we know that there were five overlapping calls coming into the contact center. Um, in this case, there were five calls uh, waiting to be queued. So this is a good way of kind of looking at your call history, looking to see, you know, when are my, when are my busy hours, but not just when are they, but at one what point in time are we the busiest? So another way to take the call manager data and to kind of expand on it and use it within a contact center environment. 
And then I'm going to jump over to the reports real quick. Let me jump, just go here. So when talking about the, the call manager or the, I'm sorry, the, the contact center reports, um, you know, if you were to ask, you know, a supervisor, what reports should you be using? My suggestion is to start with our templates. We have available on our website that you can download. Um, if you go under support, go to product downloads and then scroll down. We have some, um, some templates available, not just for CCX, but also available for call manager and queue reporting. Um, we have eight templates available for CCX. Uh, you can download them from our website and then import them into your software. Um, and you can see them here. Here's all, here's all the different reports. They kind of, uh, they cover a little bit of everything. And we have a, an article in our knowledge base that shows you how to download them and then import them. And then at the bottom of this article, we have uh, additional uh, docs that cover the different templates. So if you go to UCCX, we have links then to each report has its own um, page in our knowledge base. So these reports cover a little bit of everything. Um, the abandoned CSQ report, which I have a sample of, uh, actually I don't, let me run it real quick. This report is a great report. It just shows you um, your abandoned calls. And so if you, if you have a call center, um, I see this report used where um, in the call center, if they're doing callbacks on, on abandoned calls. They want to call back the customers. Maybe you could schedule this report to run every hour. And then you have a list of all your uh, calls that were abandoned within the previous hour. And then um, it includes a caller ID. So here's like a high level summary of how many abandoned calls. This is for uh, the previous week. Um, but we have a, high, a list of all the different um, caller IDs. So this is everybody, everybody who called in and abandoned a call. And then you can decide if you want to call them back. It's a great use for this report. Um, it's not just a report that's, you know, that you're looking at when you need to, you can schedule to run every hour. Um, but looking at the other reports, you know, we have reports that cover abandoned calls. They cover um, the agent, the agent log in, log out state. So we can see when the agents are starting their shift. We can also see uh, going back to the not ready states and, and see, you know, when the agents are ready and not ready. Uh, the agent ready, not ready report gives you a good analysis on, on that information. And then just broken down everything by, you know, by agents, but looking at the reports by hour, by date, um, and then different trends and stats for the call center. So as a new supervisor, if you, if you knew the software, I highly recommend download, downloading the templates to get yourself started. Um, but if you're familiar with these reports and if you're familiar with, you know, just building the agent reports and the key reports and you want to go outside the box, I recommend going into the call manager data, actually. So jumping into call manager. So one thing, one um, set of data that I like to look, I, I really like to look at to kind of supplement the um, CCX reporting is the, the, the cradle to grave data. So, um, you know, call manager only sees what, what comes in, you know, what call manager has, you know, control over. I'm sorry, contact center only, only can see what contact center has control over. So we can see when the call comes into the queue and when it goes to the agent. The call manager can see everything before the call gets to contact center and everything that happens once the call leaves contact center. So if a customer calls in, um, maybe they're complaining, maybe they're saying, you know, you know this agent did a great job, um, or they're maybe they, they, they got lost within your phone system somehow, they pressed a button, or they went somewhere for whatever reason, if you want to see, you know, how a customer got to your contact center and then how they, you know, what happens after they left, take a look at your, at your cradle to grave data in the, um, from the call manager. So for example, I have just built a simple report, um, over here where this is looking at everything into just where the device name is CCX. So I'm, I'm pulling all of my CCX data. Um, some basic stats, but I really want to see the detail. So here, uh, my sample report. It's right here. Um, so it's, I mean, it's a big report because I, I ran it for a couple of days. Um, I have you know over a thousand calls in the sample data, but we can see you know all the different calls. If I want to see what happened to the call, I can click on the link, and then see the cradle to grave. So I can see where they came in and then where they went to and the different phones and the different agents that they interacted with. Um, or we can take the same report and shrink it down to just be for one call record or for one number. So if, I, I, if a customer called in, um, I could take down their caller ID 
throw it in the search sets where the calling party number, because they are the, they're the party who placed the call, is their phone number. And then I can run a report that shows you that shows me all the calls that, that they placed into my phone system. So here's a report. So I have um, within the past week, I have four unique call records with their caller ID. Um, I have it broken down by hour so I can see kind of when they called in. Um, you know, they all the calls were at six in the morning. And then I have the details. So all these calls are related. They're part of the same sequence. But within Cisco's, uh, the call manager CDR, you know, it creates multiple records for each hop. So if I click on the related call link, I can see how they called into the, the CCX. So they called in. Here's the caller ID. They called in. They went to, in this case, they went to 8,000, which is Unity. Um, so they were there. They were probably, uh, you know, press one for the support, press two for this. So they made their selection. They were only there for six seconds. When the caller goes to the CCX, they're there for nine seconds. This is about Q, this is the roughly kind of, but, but the Q times. You can see, you know, from call manager's point of view, how long they may have been queued for. Again, if you want specific Q times, you know, go back and, and look at it in the CCX data. Then um, the CCX delivers the call to the agent. Here's the agent's extension. Um, this is like a blind transfer, so this is the call being delivered. Then the call is connected to the agent. They're there for, you know, at extension 7141. They're there for a minute and 12 seconds. Then 7141 dials 1127. We can see this. They talk for 28 seconds. So this is the agent calling somebody else. This person may not be part of contact center. If they're not part of contact center, then you will not see this part in the contact center CDR. So they talk for 28 seconds. Maybe they said, hey, I have you know this person online. Are you able to work with them? Can you help me? Um, so then after, after 28 seconds, they transferred the call is, you know, based on the cost code. And then the, the, the person who called in, they were connected to, to 1127 and they were there for five minutes and 51 seconds. So if, if this person was not an agent, you would not see this part, this record in this record in the CCX CDR. So, um, you know, going outside of the box and thinking outside of contact center, you can include um, you know, call measure reports to kind of to boost what you can see that goes on within um, within contact center. So definitely, kind of to over to kind of review the reports. If, if if you're new and you want to take a look from a supervisor, if you want to see just what's available and, and play around with some, with some reports, I highly highly recommend checking out our templates. Um, myself and the other SEs like Dre, you know, we we've put together some templates based on what we were seeing um, from our current customers, and this kind of gives you a really good selection as to how you how you can present the different data. But outside of that, um, yeah, look look at, at look at the call manager. That that cradle to grave data, um, it gives you a different point of view of you know how the where the call comes from, where it goes. And then um, you can use the different information like cause codes even to see how the call terminates. So if calls are being dropped, so like if calls are being dropped, every call has a has two cause codes which tell you how that record ended. So this call here, it terminated because all this text means the call was, um, let me make it a little bigger, you know, the call was transferred. Um, but then we can see here, this call terminated because the the person here, this extension, they hung up first or they hung up. So we can see, you know, if, if, if someone said, hey, you know, someone hung up on me or if a call just dropped, the call measure may also have, you know, good information as to, you know, why the call dropped. Or again, go to the grave can show you, you know, uh, where that caller went. Okay. And I think we're running out of time. So Dre, I'm going to pass it back to you for, uh, any Q and A that may have actually been. leave it up real quick. Um, could you yeah, show what a question? Um, could, could you just show, in a, uh, uh, from our website where you can get those templates at again? Um, definitely a couple questions, uh, regarding that. So if you started, like, let's say you just went to, yeah, yeah. exactly. So from, from our website, uh, if you're logged in, I'm logged in already, but if you're not logged in, um, so what we're going to do, we can go to support, um, here, go back. So from support, go to, uh, product downloads right here and then scroll down. If you're not logged in, it'll ask you to log in. And if, if you don't have a login, but you have an account, let us know, we can help you get set up. And then once you're in the, the download page, uh, scroll down and you'll find the three different sets of templates right here. So it's the same page you go to when you're downloading a, um, an update for the software, you just scroll down a little bit more. Here's the templates for um, call manager. Here are the UCCX templates. And then here are the cube templates. So 
to use these templates, though, you do have to be at Verify uh, the, the version 12.3 or higher. So if you're not, uh, you may get, I mean, it, you, the reports may not work as advertised. Um, so if, you're, if you are in, early, in an older version and you want some help upgrading, just you know, let, let us know. Yeah, when and, you download them as well, they'll they'll download in a zip, so make yeah. sure you extract right. them. So you, yeah, so when you click yeah. on download right here, click on download now, and you'll see in the bottom of the corner here, there's a zip file. And then um, for the rest of the instructions, just go back a page. There's a link here, not here, right here. Um, you can see it, hopefully on my screen. Here's the link, click on it, and then it'll take you to an, it'll take you to our knowledge base with an article that you can follow the steps to um, to import them. It's really easy. There's a lot of pictures and screenshots which make this document look a lot larger than it really is, um, but it's really straightforward. And then if you want to see the the um, the uh, knowledge base articles for each report, go to the UCCX reporting template page here, and then just click any of these links. And then it'll take you to a page that covers the actual report. Um, and you can and any changes them. that probably need to be made in there. Yeah. yeah. So some yeah some reports will require changes like this report uh, requires you to put in you know, you know to, to select your queue because they won't come already pre-selected and then there's some you know if there's optional changes you can do so here and then you can you know feel free to to modify them uh, or make any sort of changes to them um, to make them you know more fit your your environment. Awesome. And that was all all the questions we had and uh, we're definitely over time so. If you want to go ahead and pass that ball back over, great job, Mike. Thank you so much for for the great presentation on those mm -hmm. CCX uh, widgets. All right, like I said, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. And now the moment everybody's been waiting for, we're going to reward this week's Amazon gift card. And this week's winner is Richard Kravarik. Congratulations. Uh, your account manager will get a hold of you shortly and send you over that $50 Amazon gift card. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching today's uh, workshop. Next week, we're going to be talking about Verify EFT 13.0, new features, and how to get into our beta sign-up. So that's going to be next week, March 2nd, 11 a.m., as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great rest of your week.